we're in the middle of the week of middle of uh, mental health awareness week. Yeah, we know you've had a bit of a journey um, over the last four years. Yeah, yeah, and, and and this week I wrote a post on my Patreon about morning routines. But in that post, I owned what the last wee while has been like for me. And I, I'm, we're going to talk about mental health awareness week across these two breaks. So I'll just I'll just use this first one to talk about where I'm at. I've come to realise that it wasn't just my daughter's health descent that has been stressful. Uh, it's been the last four years. It's been the last four years of poor sleep, poor nutrition, lack of exercise. I've I've tried those things. And fits and starts, but it hasn't really worked. It started with COVID, uh, and some people will know that I took quite a public stance during COVID. Some people agreed with it, some people didn't agree with it. I was leading a church through COVID. So that was particularly 2021, 2020, uh, 2020 and 2021. And coming into that, I had a really healthy and good morning routine. And a lot of, and reason, and good nutrition going on, and all of that went out the window as soon as COVID and those lockdowns hit. I was up uh, checking social media first thing in the morning. I was responding to stuff late at night, and uh, the adrenaline was running hard. And my sleep went out the window. And then 2022 uh, was a big year as well, being involved in a church fallout. And then 2023 was the descent of my my daughter's health. And for that four years, I was probably sleeping most nights, four to five hours. I would crash once or twice a week so that my body could get to sleep. Uh, Nutrition had gone out the window. I was staying up late because I didn't want the next day to come. Uh, So I was staying up late. I was doing things that were easy to feel good as opposed to doing the harder things that make you feel good, like exercise, good nutrition, and sleep. So I was binge-watching Netflix. I was snacking it late at night. Now, I'm one of those people who, if it's late at night and I start snacking, I'm like, well, I've stuffed it now, so I'll just keep going. So I was probably consuming (laughs) an extra five to 600 calories at night, waking up, and then not having, whilst I was holding the next day out, and trying to delay its arrival with all the stresses that would come with it. I was setting myself up to handle it really poorly. So then when my daughter's health descended, I I just just, wasn't in a good place to deal with it. I wonder how many people's lives you've just described pretty accurately as they listen and seeing themselves and the story you're telling, being like, I do a lot of those things. Particularly the... A a number of people have said to me, having read that article... um, who are Patreon members, a number of people have said to me, that paragraph where I talk about staying up late to avoid the coming of the next day, uh, a lot of people have related to that bit in particular. Uh, So I saw a counsellor coming back from Germany. Some people will know this. I saw a counsellor, and as we talked things through and I said, look, I know the things that I need to do in order to feel better and get healthy again, but I just don't have it in the tank to pull the trigger. I started this year when we came back from Germany, I'd get my gym gear out with the intention to go to the gym or go for a walk, and I would put the clothes on, but I just couldn't get out the door. Uh, So I had the intention, but I just couldn't pull the trigger. So we honed in on sleep as being the thing that I really needed to work on. So we came up with a sleep routine. I think we've joked in the past about the moisturizing that I (laughs) do before I go to bed (laughs) now. Uh, And that just changed everything. So a few weeks of sleeping properly then gave me what I needed to be able to pull the trigger on exercising again and eating better. And I've changed my diet, increased the protein, decreased the calories. Because in the last four years, I put on something like 14, 15, 16, probably about 17 kg. And I want to to lose that. Um, That would have been tough on you, not only as a person, but, you know, you in ministry at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I, I can... In ministry, you practice some things. There are some things that happen regularly. So there's a point where you can fake it till you till you can fake it, but that can only go so far. And in my in my chaplaincy work in particular, when I sit down with people, I need to be truly present and truly listening for that to be meaningful. Uh, I was at a point where I could give all the cues that I was listening, but I probably wasn't really. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't really present, and so. Part of my need to get on top of this is to be able to do the things that I love and that I feel like I'm built for and to do them well. And I, it wasn't going to be much longer if I didn't do that until everything would come crashing, crashing down. My whole ministry would have come crashing down. Yeah. 
What do you notice uh, difference-wise in your your headspace over that that change? Like when you're in the 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 poor times, not looking after yourself, your your sleeping bad, your eating bad, your your routines are all out of whack for a long period of time, and then as you start to improve those things, what, do you notice a change in your your own inner talk, that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, it's much more positive now. And I feel I feel less agitated about everybody else in the world, <laughs> which is which is nice. But I, I want to acknowledge that it's only been a a few months uh, of feeling like health is is coming back again, and I've noticed that it's tentative. There, not this weekend just gone, but last weekend in particular, my daughter was having a bit of a struggle, and my emotions just descended. Uh, rapidly, I remember uh, Sunday last week I was crying in the kitchen with my with my wife because I was just finding it so hard. And I had a church service that I then had to lead. Thankfully, a couple of people stepped up and, and did it for me. And by the end of Sunday, I was out of it. I had a nap. I'd gone for a walk. Uh, my headspace now, if I'm feeling low, comes up with a million excuses to not do some of the non-negotiables I've set in place. Like it's non-negotiable now that uh, apart from every now and then, like a rest day every now and then, I have to do a minimum 10,000 steps as exercise. And my brain was going, don't do it. Life sucks. It's not going to make any difference anyway. Life is still going to suck tomorrow. If you go for your 10,000 steps, it's not going to make any difference. Like my head Mm -hmm. would come up with a million excuses. But because I'm sleeping properly, I had just enough in the tank to go, no, we've decided we're going to do this no matter what. So I walked out the door. Didn't solve the problem by the time I'd finished my 8K walk and got my 10,000 steps, but I felt a bit better. I had what I needed in the tank to do my radio show that night. By the end of that show, life just felt life felt better again. I think you've given people some nice little uh, advice there. But if there was a key takeaway outside of the pulling the trigger that you want somebody to take away from what you just shared with us, what would that be? The key for me was talking to somebody about it. Like, uh, I, I had I had all the knowledge in my head about what I needed to do, uh, but it was talking with a counsellor that made the, the really big difference. It was finding someone who could just walk through that process with me. And because I know how counselling works and the techniques, uh, I told him, look, don't follow any of the <laughs> Don't try your tricks on me. Because mate. I'm yeah. just going to examine you. Yeah. So I want your advice. Don't just help me find it. I want your advice. I want to hear your life stories. And so uh, it was seeing a counsellor that made the big difference, being able to externalise the problem and walk through the process with him and being then accountable to him because I knew that next time we met, he was going to ask me how it's going. That's awesome, Frank. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, I want to talk. We up next. Frank's going to stick around, and it is it is themed around mental health awareness week, and maybe where faith comes into it. Aaron Colterian and Lima Blaze and Proof. We're closing in on seven thirty. A beautiful morning this morning. Hanging out with Reverend Frank Ritchie. Nice text that's come in uh, for you, Frank. We were hearing a little bit about your own um, mental health space, especially over the last number of years. And uh, Lise has texted in saying, wow, uh, Reverend Frank, your message today is at home for me. I'm a mental health nurse. Um, it can be an overwhelming role at times. You've just described exactly where I'm at currently as well. Uh, I'm going to start taking some steps to change, uh, make some change in my life and practice what I preach to my clients. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. God I, bless you, Lise. I would encourage people, if you're... If you're feeling really low, I mean, we, many of us know the things that we need that we need to do to get back on top yeah. of it. And we just, uh, if you're not sleeping in particular, having the energy to do those things is really hard. So it's easy to look and go, okay, I need to do this, 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 and this. Uh, one of the things that my counselor and I settled on was just what's the what's the one little thing that I could do that would enable the next step. Um, James Clear's book, uh, Atomic Habits, is really good on this. Habit stacking. Just start with one little thing that maybe you can connect to some other things, but just start with that one little thing that you can do. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, there are so many things I need to do to get back on track, uh, it's easy to try and be heroic, but you'll probably fall off the wagon again. Just do the one little thing. Find that one little thing. So we've talked this morning about um, sort of lifestyle changes, practical things, you know, you can put in place to take care of your your mental health and, and look after that side of yourself. Moving more into um, professional mental health support, 
Do you think within um, the church or sometimes Christians, there's a a reluctance to engage um, professional for mental health when it when it's got to the point maybe where it's beyond kind of just your lifestyle factors? And also, I mean, you know, you've been a, a church leader for a long time, um, and you know, been in the Christian world long time. Too. Do you think that there's a stigma still around medication for people with mental health conditions? Yeah, I think it varies from tradition to tradition. Like I know in uh, some traditions now, uh, ministers in training have to do things called pastoral education, which is chaplaincy training, and their theological paper will include things around mental health and formation, but that's not true in every tradition, every denomination, every expression of the church. And I know very well that there are some expressions of church that don't do this very well at all. I remember my daughter who deals with anxiety going to a church service somewhere. I'm not going to name the church or where. Uh, and she ended up having a panic attack because the minister was on stage. The whole sermon was pretty much yelling. Uh, and the minister was on stage saying, if you deal with anxiety, it's because you do not trust God enough. We're going to pray you through that, inviting people up to the front. And because she deals with that stuff, she she just didn't, didn't cope with the service, understandably. I watched the video of that and just got livid. Um, <laughs> I mean, just to be honest, and I know that some people too might be in churches where mental health stuff is acknowledged, but then you head along on a Sunday and it's rel- like the whole community is relentlessly positive. Everything is victory. Everything is good. Everything is happy. And then if you're struggling, you feel slightly out of place. Uh, so I just want you to know if you're feeling down, I mean... One of the first things we acknowledge theologically is that we are broken. We are mm-hmm. fallen. That includes our body. That includes our brain. Uh, so if there's a, if you're feeling really low, sometimes it's hormonal. Sometimes there's disconnects going on in the brain. And to talk to a professional and to get medical help, I think, is just part of dealing with a fallen, broken world that includes our body. That doesn't negate the power of yep. prayer and the power of faith, but those things can work together. Yes, and amen to that. Couldn't agree with you more. You've been on fire this morning. I don't think there's anything more I can add to, to that discussion other than um, you've mentioned, you know, in this chat, I'm going to open it up again. Um, I love that you've <laughs> talked openly about counselling and seeking professional help if you need to. Yeah. I think I think we've come uh, a ways uh, around mental health and well-being to be able to destigmatize that, to be able to to make that to normalise that. If you're under a little pressure, do you think us as a church community have come a long way in terms of? Yes. Great. Yes, I, th- I think about my mother's journey. My mother suffers from various mental illnesses. I think about the journey that she went through through the 80s in particular and how she would be handled in many churches, now not all churches, and I, I think she'd be handled much better. Just very quickly to close on this, I want to say too that if you're in that space, things like prayer can be really hard. And then we beat ourselves up that maybe our relationship with God isn't so good or when you're low, God can feel uh, distant. I just want to say that God has space for you as well. I think about Elijah and when he had despair after going through a big miracle that would make us all go, whoa, you must think God is amazing when he was uh, battling with the prophets of Baal. And then he hits this real low and uh, angels turn up to to feed him god uh, god is there god is feeding you even if you don't feel it and sometimes just sitting in silence looking at a tree might be as far as you can get i just say do it that's a good prayer life amen thanks rev for popping in today we missed you we'll see you next wednesday thank you